two writers, one just starting out, the other a bestseller. Join James Blatch and Mark Dawson and their amazing guests as they discuss how you can make a living telling stories. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to the Self Publishing Formula podcast with James and Mark. I hope you've had a good week. Hope you had a good week writing and selling. Uh, that's Mark. Or uh, avoiding writing and not selling because you haven't written anything. And that's me. Hello. It's the two sides of being a writer, isn't it? All neatly encapsulated in one podcast. <laughs> we should call this the Right and Wrong Show. Get it? I do. That's very, uh, you're very sharp this morning, James. Should we be a writer? Um, yes, no, I am getting on. I am getting on with it. We are the, actually the reason that neither of us have been doing probably any writing this week. We are incredibly busy. We are on the cusp of launching uh, Facebook ads for authors for the fourth time. It's been rebranded, actually been renamed. We're coming at ads for authors because the course now encompasses all the uh, paid advertising platforms that uh, you should know about in detail. And uh, it's been rebranded in its look as well, Marcus. And we're very excited about the look of the course. It looks beautiful. Yeah, we do. We, we've um, we've spent quite a bit of money hiring um, a designer who's very well known in the UK for working with some big brands, people like Green and Black's Chocolate um, and other similar, um, I think Wagamamas as well, people like that. So she's basically worked on the, our, um, our slides, our design, our image. And also what we're doing, um, just to kind of give people an idea of how seriously we treat the quality of the product that we're putting out, um, what we're doing at the moment is I'm revoicing all of the um, all of the sessions because, as you say, we've released this four times now. We've we've gradually added new content to the course every time we've released it, and that's meant that um, some of the early recordings are say two years old, and and others will be twelve months old, eighteen months old. And the difference between them is is obvious. Um, and I'm not happy with putting out a, a product like that that just doesn't sound right. So we're actually uh, we're getting all of the transcripts done, and I'm going to sit down and revoice them over the next couple of days. So that's probably 15 or 20 hours worth of me talking into a microphone. But I think it's important so that um, new new students and of course all old students too, because they they'll get all of this um, at the same time. It's just the the most premium experience and the most um, satisfactory experience that you can get out there in in this particular kind of field. Yeah, that's uh, that's our attention to detail, and we have quite a team who've grown up. Uh, we've got people working in, in California and Canada, uh, in southern England, and quite close to me, about forty miles away from me, is Catherine, who's currently editing the scripts for Mark ahead of him, reading them, and then I get the voice files, and then I'll re-edit the uh, the video um, files with the new voice on it, which is difficult and time consuming and I may end up outsourcing so if you are a video editor in the Cambridgeshire area get in touch there's probably some work for you um, I want to mention two other things about the course we are going to talk about the big reveal in the course today which is we are adding a module on AMS ads this is the Amazon's in-house advertising paid advertising platform which was launched just, just a few months ago. Mark was on the beta team for that. He has got completely into this in the way that Mark does. Uh, so there's nothing he doesn't know. You've got a lot of money spent on the platform now, Mark, in terms of results. And we're going to go through everything you need to know about AMS ads. Obviously, not everything you need to know in instructional detail, because that would be the course. But uh, you're going to get great value out of this podcast uh, with that. That wasn't a sales pitch, just obviously in a course module, you can get into the nitty gritty of how to do things. But we're going to go through the platform um, uh, in the podcast. I'm going to mention briefly Twitter ads as well. <clears throat> Now, Twitter ads, when they, uh, when the Twitter ads platform, we first started using it, it was um, people who've done the Twitter module that came out in the Ads for Authors course will know that it's you have to work hard to get Twitter ads working for you. You can do it, and uh, but there's particular ways, and we went into those techniques, and it was a very, very precise use of the platform. So you ignored... 85% of it and you just use the lead cards to cut down on the user journey and you use them in a particular way and you use your audience in a particular way and in those circumstances if you've got your ducks in a row and a bit of help as well a bit of luck you got good results you got a conversion rate that was going to work for you recently Twitter took away the lead cards and in that single move it has suddenly made it it to my view impossible for authors to get any kind of proper value a reasonable rate out of twitter ads now i've put some notes out on the uh, forums 
asking other people how they're getting on. The first few people who've come back have said exactly the same as my um, my instinct was that they can't make money uh, on Twitter ads anymore as it stands. So our advice is probably going to be in the future for, at the moment at least, for Twitter ads platform not to be a place to go to for authors. Twitter organic growth, however, is definitely something that you can do um, and something you should be doing. So what we have done, a bit of a pivot with the Ads for Authors course, there's going to be a bonus module on uh, the detail of how to grow your Twitter author account organically without spending money. So we can reveal that today as well. And that's going to come along in the next few weeks. So excited about that. And uh, you'll remember Ian Sutherland, who was on the podcast a little while back, who's the guru in this area, written a book on the subject. He is going to be our guest author for that module. So we're very excited to announce that. And I want to thank Ian for coming on board with that. Um, and yeah, everyone likes to be able to do something for free. It takes a bit of work and, and know-how, doesn't it, Mark? But not everything in our course means that you're going to need an upfront amount of money to get going on it. Twitter, organic growth is free. Yeah, absolutely. There's um, plenty of ways to do that. And, and AMS ads don't need to be expensive either. So um, yeah, there's lots of good value to be had. Yeah, good. Um, now, uh, before we get on to the meat of today's podcast, uh, which is the uh, AMS ads, let's talk about our vault, uh, which is uh, something you can download. Uh, we know that there's been a lot of good stuff in the podcast over the last year. Um, hours and hours of it is there but to find it you kind of have to listen to everything it's a rather linear journey or you can maybe if you're lucky remember which episode is of interest to you uh, so what we've done uh, is we've put everything together into an ebook so the transcripts all the relevant transcripts have gone into an ebook which is searchable so for instance if you did for instance want to start uh, focusing on your Twitter platform, you can search on Twitter and go and find the episodes where we've mentioned that, and in particular the one with Ian Sutherland, where he goes into great detail about how to do that. Um, AMS ads obviously is going to come up, uh, Facebook ads and so on, whatever particular subject you want, all the authors you want to listen to and read their interviews. So that's going to be a very, very useful, incredibly useful ebook, we think, to people. And you can get it absolutely free. Just simply visit uh, this URL, selfpublishingformula.com forward slash vault, V A U L T. Um, it's being put together at the moment. So if you don't get it immediately, you'll get a holding email telling you it's coming in the next few days. I say selfpublishingformula.com. We've had a week of it, haven't we, Mark? In, in the midst of everything else. We've learned. I learned yeah, a lot. going down twice. Got a site's gone down. <laughs> uh, I want to say thank you to a guy called Mike who I've never met. We're going to meet him um, this week in the London Book Fair. Who was up till three something in the morning. I think the last email I saw from him was about three twenty in the morning. He got our site back online. Um, so he's done a great job, Stuart and Mike over there in east of england but uh, yeah all the things that we all have to deal with whether you're an author running a small business uh, you're running a small business and i think this is one area where it is actually it's it's very disparate area and doesn't matter who you are you need a certain amount of know-how about how websites work even just to get people to do the right thing for you it's actually quite a difficult area to navigate and um, the 101 course goes into quite a lot of detail on this and some of the nitty-gritty stuff but um that's definitely something we should come back to on the podcast i think get somebody on who can just speak plain english to us and explain explain to us what hosting is and what we should be looking for and so on mm -hmm. yep. anyway yeah it's been a uh, stressful but anyway we're moving on. <laughs> it has john dyer's lying down in a dark room as we speak Okay, right. Mark, are you ready for AMS ads? I'm ready. Bring it on. You're ready. Okay, so AMS ads. So I guess this was an inevitability. I'm not sure how many people predicted it, that um, Amazon would sit there and they see people putting a lot of money into platforms like Facebook to run adverts to drive people to Amazon. But actually, you've made it clear right from the beginning, and a lot of the Facebook ads for authors course at the beginning talks about how to optimise the way that you present your book to Amazon and the way you use your launch team, etc., to get Amazon's own algorithms working for you. And that can be very powerful. So Amazon is sitting there knowing that they've got good algorithms, knowing that when they push a book, it's very, very uh, useful for you and can really be very valuable. So I suppose the logical step for them was to monetize that and say, look, okay, you're not everyone's going to hit our algorithms. Not everyone's going to get into the bestseller list. But if you want to give yourself a, a push... Here's how you do it. And the AMS platform was born. It was. It was born a couple of years ago. So um, it was originally just something that people um, who were in select 
could get involved with. And um, I've, I think I was in Select when it launched and I did try it um, and was really disappointed with the results. And I basically I put a few ads up and then ignored them because they weren't spending any money um, and they weren't selling any books. So I got quickly kind of moved away from there, went, went to Facebook and the other platforms that I use for advertising. Uh, but then about um, October or November last year, we got a message in one of our Facebook groups from someone who said that, I don't know if you know this, but um, Amazon ads are now available for any books, regardless of whether they're in select or not. And that wasn't announced at that point. It was just something that they'd changed. And when I, I actually contacted Amazon to speak to them about whether that was true, whether, you know, and, and they said, um, it's, yeah, that's not true. Um, and then, and then they came back to me and said, oh, yeah, it is true. Um, so we, we kind of we got slightly ahead of the curve there. But as soon as I noticed that, I immediately started to test um, with, with the books. My, my Milton series is the, is the best known one. That's everywhere. But I wanted to try and test those books on Amazon with, with these new ads. And I've been running ads, um, quite a lot of ads, actually, um, over the, the period since it's been open to me. And I am much more um, encouraged by the... Uh, the success of those ads is very different from how it was before um, in kind of bottom line terms. I'm actually selling books now and making a pretty good profit on, on the spend that I'm putting in. So we can go through um, what the ads are, the, the options available, some tips for optimizing them, making them work um, and, you know, definitely give give listeners and viewers a really good um, idea about how they can start to run these ads um, for themselves. Yeah. OK, well, let's start with what they are. Where do they appear? So they obviously appear on Amazon, which is um, is that's a very good thing in itself because the thing with with kind of Facebook ads or or Google ads, YouTube videos, Twitter, whatever it is, you're you're directing traffic to the place where the books will be bought. So sending traffic to doesn't have to be Amazon, could be Amazon, Kobo, Barnes and Noble, whatever your retailer is. So there is a stage um, that you've got to an extra stage that you've got to put potential customers through before they can they can actually buy your book and then also on top of that if you think about pl- platforms like um youtube people are there to watch videos facebook they're there to to you know hang out with their friends um, they're not necessarily on either of those platforms in fact any platform including google um, they're not necessarily there to make a purchase immediately so the difference with amazon um when you're on amazon you are probably wanting to buy something. You're looking to buy something. And then um, coupling to that is the fact that you can buy something with a click. Uh, people, have, you know, the path to purchase is much, much shorter and people are in the mood to make a purchase. So if you can start to get ads working on a platform like that, it stands to reason that um, everything else being even, they should perform quite strongly. So there are two two particular kinds of ads that we'll talk about. We'll talk about one more than the others because um, I'm having better success with with one of them. You've got product display ads and sponsored keyword ads. Um, And looking at them individually, the product display ads, um, they appear on the product pages right beneath the buy button. So if you just kind of visualize your Amazon product page right now, the buy button is over on the right hand side. um, And then beneath that will be a little tiny piece of real estate that you you can have an ad in there. So there's that. Um, you can also get those ads to appear on Kindle lock screens. So if you, you know, pick up your Kindle, it's been on your bedside table overnight and you open it up, sometimes you'll be presented with an ad there. And that can that they can be um, ads that you've bought through product display. So that's, that's, that's that. The other one, and this is the one I'm having more success with, so we'll spend longer on these. Uh, they, they're called sponsored keyword ads. So the difference with these um, is that, first of all, with product display ads, you're bidding, uh, you're, you're targeting ASINs, so Amazon's standard identifying number. You're um, targeting other books and, and you want to, to get your book on those pages. So for me, I might be targeting James Patterson's new book um, or Terry Hayes' new book. And I'll be using those ASINs to, um, to target my ads. With the sponsored keyword ads, um, you're actually targeting the keywords that people are searching for in the Amazon search box. So I might be, say, I am Pilgrim. That's a, a well-known book from last year that I, I, I will get some mileage out of advertising with that. I'll, my keyword will be I am Pilgrim. Um, and if people um, search that, then if I win the auction, um, my books will appear in the search results. They can also appear on the product pages as well. So that's the, the, the kind of the fundamental differences between the two. Um, is, it, is it clear to the 
uh, the Amazon browser that these are adverts? Because Amazon yeah, they, do a lot of their algorithm as, pushing, don't they? Mm-hmm, they do. Um, they're listed as sponsored. So if you look um, on the sales ads, the keyword ads, um, they'll be down towards the bottom of the the page of ads, usually the, the last couple of lines, and it will say sponsored. Um, and I think that's the case also for the um, the product display ads. Okay. Okay, so, so we've got um, the product display and sponsored keyword are the two primary different ads. Yes, correct. That's right. So I, I'm focusing on the um, on the latter. I've done lots of testing on product display ads with some success. Um, and I mean, I've spoken to another author called Brian Meeks. He was listening, I think, to this, this show. And he's very, very, um, he's a data analyst by profession. So he's, he's a really good person to, to speak to. And he's also done loads and loads of testing on, on these ads. And he, he conversely has more success with product display ads. So uh, it's definitely worth testing both. My I can only um, speak to my own, the more successful of the two um, that, I, that I've done, and that would be the sponsored keyword ads. So that's what we'll focus on. So to get, to get into the ads, the, the first thing you need to do is go to your KDP dashboard. Um, and then there's two ways you can, you can get into them for the first time. If you go over to the, um, the books page, there'll be a, a, on the right hand side where you've got things like the price, the, uh, the detail, all that stuff. There'll be one that says uh, promote and advertise. So you can get into them that way to advertise the individual book. You can also go into your dashboard with your sales data, your reports. And I think the bottom left of the options above the sales graph is, is advertising. So you can click in there as well. Um, and you go in through your normal Amazon account. It's really simple, straightforward to start running these ads. Um, and you can, I mean, you can get them running in minimal time. And, you, and another good thing is you don't actually need um, uh, visual um, assets because um, unlike Facebook, where you do need an, a, 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 an image that's tailored to sell books, uh, in this case, it's going to be using your book cover. So you don't need to worry about engaging a designer. All you're going to need to do is work on the targeting and, and then to work on the sales copy. Okay, so the um, uh, that is an advantage. That happens automatically, does it? You're, it just brings in your cover because you've told it what product it is. Yeah, it does. You, you'll you'll be advertising. A, you, you tell it what you want to advertise. So for me, it will either be a box set. Um, I'm also having success with single books, which is something that's more difficult on Facebook, but it does seem to be working on Amazon right now. So you put all of that um, in there, and, and it automatically uh, picks the product up, and then you just need to work on the copy. It's quite simple. So. If you if let's let's think about those sponsored ads. So, well, actually, let's just think about the benefits of advertising generally, because there's more than the obvious one being that you're going to sell books. That's a that's an obvious benefit. If you're selling enough to make more revenue than you, the cost of advertising, that's obviously a good thing. There are other benefits as well. Every book you sell is going to increase your rank, so that will increase your um, organic sales as well. So Amazon will, you know, in the same way that any kind of advertising will raise the rank of a book. If you um, start to sell more, Amazon on the other side of its business will notice and you'll start to get that kind of organic algorithmic push that you, that you would normally see as, you, as your book rises up the charts. So anything you do to stimulate that is a good thing and, and these ads will do that. But the other thing about these ads, and no one really picks this up, I think it's a really, really valuable benefit, is that you only pay for clicks. So you only you, you set a bid that you're prepared to pay for a specific click. And if you get a click, let's say um, you win the auction for that click at 25 cents, that would be what you bid. But um, in order to, to get clicks, you, your ad needs to be served to get impressions and you don't pay for those impressions. So if you have no clicks, um, you could you're still getting um, the benefit of your brand being broadcast quite widely on on Amazon, which is, is, a, is an extremely valuable place to be advertising. And since I've been running these ads more aggressively since, let's say, late October last year, um, for the grand, I mean, we'll, we'll go through some numbers as well. I've spent just short of two thousand um, dollars. I'd love to spend two hundred thousand um, dollars, but that, that we'll get into scaling, which is an issue in itself in a minute. But I've, I've spent two thousand dollars, and I've had sixteen million impressions on Amazon. So if you just think about that from kind of a traditional advertising viewpoint, and how much it might cost to to get your your product broadcast that widely to, to a specific and relevant audience on a place like Amazon, it would cost a hell of a lot more than $2,000. So that's a really valuable benefit. Everyone should be doing this, even if even if the ads aren't working and you're not selling enough books, you're getting a massive benefit from, from that exposure. 
Well, that takes us back, doesn't it, to the seven touches, the whole philosophy of advertising, that people don't see an advert and buy a product immediately. It starts to seep in after a while. They become familiar with the imagery and the brand, and then they'll make a purchase down the line. So that's why each one of those impressions, which, as you say, you don't pay for, are actually of great value to you. Yeah, it's very valuable. So I mean, just in terms of getting onto the numbers, so I spent $1,898 so far. That's brought in a profit um, of $2,695, which is a, re- is a return on investment of about 42%. So that's really healthy. Um, you know, anything, you know, a 0% return would be acceptable, break even, because that doesn't take into account things like read through. It doesn't take into account Kindle Unlimited reads. Uh, it doesn't take into account audiobook purchases as well. So that, that's kind of a, the base. So it's actually likely that that return is probably up towards 60 or 70 percent when all of those are added in, which is is a fabulous um, return. So, you know, they, they are working. Um, there's no two ways about it. They are working. It's just uh, optimizing them is the challenge right now. Yeah. So they're, um, that's good. Is that your total spend? Is it two grand and um, so far? Yeah. OK. Yep, so- that's, what, that's, that's the spend. Yeah. I mean, for you, in terms of uh, spend on a platform, that's quite a low rate. And you mentioned scaling. And this is something you actually mentioned to Amazon themselves, isn't it, when we dropped in there last week. Do you want to touch on scaling now? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I've, I've actually I reached out to Amazon uh, to put me in touch with the AMS team. So I've had a quite a long conversation with quite a senior member of, of the team in Seattle. Um, and we're we're doing some work to optimize my my ads and obviously as as that work gets done i'll pass any good information on to the community as well um but yeah scaling is the issue it is it's difficult to get amazon to spend the budget so um i think if i kind of calculate how much i've told amazon i'm prepared to spend on these ads i mean some of them are up to a thousand dollars a day um others are say five hundred dollars to a hundred dollars the actual exposure where a, a a switch to be flipped somewhere in in, in um, Seattle, and and those were all spent. I would probably be looking at um, thirty or forty grand in a day um, were that to happen. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm monitoring those ads, and it's quite easy to do that. If that were, I don't want that to happen without me knowing about it. Obviously, um, so I'm monitoring them every day, and it's it's easy to keep on top of that. But at the moment, I probably spend about fifty or sixty dollars a day on these ads, and and maybe you know make back a hundred. Um, so obviously that's great, but I'd much rather spend five thousand dollars a day and make back seven thousand. Um, that would obviously I'm selling a ton more books like that, which all the other benefits will, would come into play. But that that is the issue; it's getting them to scale. Um, so I mean, we can kind of jump around there, but I've got I've got some suggestions on how how to do that. Okay. Um, there, I suppose there are two ways, really. I mean, Amazon is going to, in the same way that Facebook does, it rewards it rewards relevance. I'm trying to say that without getting my words sound like Jonathan Ross. Uh, reward, rewards reward relevance. relevance. <laughs> so, um, if you if you have a campaign that's particularly relevant, so the keywords are uh, in alignment with what the the people are searching for, it's likely that your ads will be shown more. That therefore means it's likely that you'll get more clicks, which means that you'll spend more of your budget. So always trying to optimize my ads to, to make that more relevant but the the other way to do it and it's easy to illustrate this with a, with an example if if you want to spend if your aim is to spend a hundred dollars a day on your amazon ads there are there are a couple of ways to do it you could have 10 ads and you want them to spend ten dollars a day now that's going to be quite difficult most ads won't spend that much um, every day the other way to do it is kind of a brute force method is to have a hundred ads that each spend one dollar a day and that is possible. So that that has been the way I have increased my ad spend. Um, I'm actually running at the moment 202 different campaigns. It's quite easy to copy and and, and you know replicate them. Just tweak the a few details. But that, that has campaigns. been successful. Not not identical. The targeting will be different. So I'm sending different. I'm targeting different keywords. Um, sometimes I might have a suite of say you know, a thousand keywords in one ad, and I'll I'll run different products into those keywords so i might have a box set a, a single book um or you know the other way around is to say I'm, I'm advertising the box set and i'm changing the keywords every time so i'll be advertising to um keywords that i think are going to be being used by people who like james patterson's books searching for his books or vince flynn or badachi or all that kind of stuff so it, it's a combination of all of those different things um but by building up that big um armory of ads 
that's been the way that I've most successfully spent more money. It is kind of weird. I've always I said to Amazon, like, I want to spend more money. I've never had a problem with Amazon taking my money before. It's normally it's quite the opposite. It's normally I don't want to spend too much, but um, that's that is the challenge right now. I think probably Amazon is is the reason it is difficult is because Amazon doesn't want to flood their platform with ir- irrelevant ads. Um, they want the experience to be pleasant for their customers, which is in the same way that Facebook won't show relevant, irrelevant ads because they don't want to bombard their users with ads that have nothing to do with them. So there, there is that, 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 I think those two factors are the, the key things that you need to bear in mind as you try to scale these ads up. And it's a relatively new platform and not everyone is going to be as savvy at targeting as you and our listeners. Um, and we know that because occasionally we have a laugh, don't we, when we see an advert in our Facebook timeline. I think you saw one the other day from a traditional publisher, and it was targeting mm. people who like ebooks. Yeah, yeah, that was a I face mean, moment. A pretty broad uh, target. If, o- if only there was a course they could take to learn if about only, that. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Where would that be? Look, before <laughs> we go on, I just want to go back to the product ads because I'm quite curious as to why um, you're not favouring these so much at the moment. Uh, what's your theory about why the product uh, ads aren't working as well? I have one idea. Um, it could be those ads appear, um, as I said mainly um, just below the buy button so if you think um, if you think about a customer journey if, if I'm let's say I'm searching for the new James Blatch novel in you know when that finally sees the light of day um, if I'm on the on the page for the novel um, I've probably already decided or I'm close to deciding that I, that I want to buy it to see um, the ad just below the buy button, you've got to have an incredibly compelling ad at that stage to change someone's mind. I think that when they reach that stage that they're hovering the, the cursor over the buy button, um, they've pretty much decided that, that that is the book they want to buy. They're not then going to reverse and start to reassess that decision and choose something else. The sponsored product ads appear, the sponsored keyword ads appear slightly earlier in that customer journey so they're in the in the search results people may just be browsing they've they've probably got an inclination towards say um james blatch who hasn't got an inclination towards james blatch but let's just say that they um they've decided that they want to to read that book but they haven't they haven't made their mind up to quite the extent that they would have once they've actually reached the product page that's that's my that's my theory right now yeah i think that sort of makes sense to the uh, the buyer's journey it's quite late in the process isn't it to suddenly get them to pivot uh, and buy something else okay um so we mentioned scaling and that was a good uh, little um a uh, bit of detail for people to potentially to get around the problem of, uh, of, of uh, amazon not taking your money um what are the other issues that you've discovered in your uh, your work so far well finding the keywords is, is a challenge um so amazon allows you to have up to a thousand keywords um in each ad and some of mine do have that many others will have 50 or 100 but um i I tend to go bigger rather than smaller um and getting those ads getting those keywords researched is is challenging but there are some ways that you can short circuit that and this is by kind of applying um learnings from um, google cpc campaigns google have been doing this for you know 15 20 years now so there's lots of things that we can learn from people who are advertising through that platform um that we can apply to, to amazon so But starting on Amazon, first of all, the easiest place is to look, if you're targeting other authors, then a good place to start is to look on your also boughts on your um, author page. So for me, you know, go to your author page and you'll see Vince Flynn, Child, Baldacci, Patterson, all those kinds of guys. So you can start and kind of dig those out, put them onto a spreadsheet, and then you can um, start to research them. So click on them, go to their author page and find out which other authors, readers buy, who also buy those people. And you can continue to to build those um, those audiences up that way. You can use a, a tool like yassiv.com, so it's Y-A-S-I-V, and that um, will, in a visual form, demonstrate, if you type in a product, it will then kind of nest out, or like a spider's web, it will, uh, it will connect other books that other readers have bought. It's quite a good way to kind of visualize what also books can look like sometimes. Um, and then I mean, there are lots of other tools, and I won't mention all of them now, uh, but another good one is uh, is the Google AdWords Planner. So if you, uh, you'll you need a Google AdWords account for that. You don't need any money. You just set the account up, then you uh, you find the AdWords Planner, and you can type in um, a phrase like um, Lee Child, and Google will tell you the other phrases that people who search for Lee Child have also used, so kind of connected search terms. 
and then you can just pull those out as a spreadsheet, dump them into um, AMS, and, and then, then start to run those keywords and see how, how they perform. That's a, that's a pretty good way to, to get scale quite quickly. Yeah, and it's worth remembering that people use Amazon as a search engine. In fact, I think I saw an, ad, an interview with um, Elon Musk where he said that the number one search engine in the world for a, a huge amount of, uh, of what people search for is Amazon, not Google. People go to Amazon, Amazon and search. Is- Amazon is the third biggest search engine in the world. Um, so yeah, it's, but for some Google, products, for, then, for some areas, it's number one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and the difference between Google and Bing and Yahoo and Amazon is Amazon is people have their credit. Amazon's got your credit card details, and you can buy something with a click. You can't do that quite so easily with Google. So that's the reason why these ads are so powerful. It's 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 you're in the, exactly the right place where you want to be. Yeah, and uh, in terms of search, we always, we say keywords. Um, but actually, often it's a better way to think of it. I think is search terms is what because in, key in phrases. YouTube, key phrases and search terms. Certainly in YouTube, actually typing in how do you self-publish a novel is quite a good keyword in inverted commas for you to have. It's a complete phrase, but it matches very closely what people have gone on there to to do, and then hopefully they find us um, uh, as a result of that. So I think that probably is the same on all the platforms. It doesn't have to be individual words, as some people uh, seem to think. Good. Okay, so um, you've got to find your keywords, and you've got some ways around that. Which, are, I mean, that's applicable, obviously, to other platforms as well. Uh, what are your tips then to uh, to forge ahead and make these work? So, I mean, I, I'll kind of touch on a few kind of best practice points, and we'll we'll go into masses more detail um, in the course as well. But just um, for this uh, for, for the purposes of this podcast, some things that people should bear in mind. If you're going to be running loads and loads of different campaigns, you've got to get your naming convention set up at the start so that it's easy for you to search through the results later when you want to find out how things are working. So I would say a really good kind of convention right now is to, um, first of all, um, in the uh, naming box, it gives you quite a few characters to play with, is to say, first of all, what you're advertising. So for me, it could be box set one, or it could be cleaner or a driver being the names of books. Then I would say, have a little dash to separate the uh, the two pieces of information. And then um, mention your, your targeting. So for me, it could be Vince Flynn, or it could be 100 best thrillers, um, that kind of um, information so that you know what the targeting was for it without having to go into uh, the ad to actually find it yourself. And then another piece of useful information is to just set out what your your bid was per click at the end of that string. So another dash, and then it might be twenty five cents, or it could be a dollar, or seventy five cents, whatever it was. And with those those three pieces of information are um, the ones that you would need most regularly. So it makes sense to have those available in an easy to digest fashion, rather than having to dig into the uh, the actual information itself to find that out. So that would be that's a very good place to start. Um, the image of your ad, as I said, that's going to be your book cover. So you need to make sure that, and this is this is not um, something that's specific just to ads. It's, this is something that you should have mastered anyway. Um, it needs to look great in a thumbnail because it's going to be a smaller image than would be the case on your product page. So make sure that you check it on a thumbnail that it looks looks good. It's um, also worth remembering, and I was just going to say, it's also worth remembering to check it what it looks like in black and white and on on. Um, the Kindle for the Kindle. potentially yep. placing the advert there. Uh, something I showed yep. people in the one-on-one course within Vellum, you can do that very nicely in Vellum. You can see what it's going to look like on the front page of a of a uh, of a Kindle because that could be a very important place that people go to or have it presented yep. to them. Yeah, absolutely, definitely a good good, good tip. Um, so the destination is going to be so people click on the ads, they're going to go to your product page. So again, this is all. Um, standard stuff but you need to make sure that that page is perfect so no typos plenty of reviews uh, good uh, image um, everything made as 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 effective as possible we go through that in tons and tons of detail in in the one-on-one course but that's um, that's all fairly obvious stuff Um, now the next thing this is where you kind of have the most leeway and that's with your copy Um, so you do have to write some copy you have a very limited amount of space it's it's only it's only a few 50 or 60 characters which goes very very quickly Um, so just kind of basic copywriting 101 you need to think about it from the perspective of your potential reader the potential buyer Um, so really good um, 
standard practice in this is to ask a question and to be uh, and to engage them personally so uh, if, you know obviously this has been um, copied ad infinitum now because i started out with this copy on facebook but it's do you like x then you might like y um that that does work very well and it, it's still it's working on amazon right now i'm still using that kind of formulation some of the time um you can also ask intriguing questions so it could be um i think one i've used is um uh, how would you catch the most dangerous man in the world? Something like that. So it's a really interesting question that immediately people start to think about, oh, how would I do that? And then using words like you is, is quite useful too. So if you, you're immediately posing that question to, to, to the person who's reading it specifically, it's much m much more effective than saying, um, buy, buy James Blatch's new novel right now. It's, it's really good. You know, it's actually, you've got to make it um, a more of a, a two-way process there. Um, don't follow the herd. So I'd say write something original. So, you know, come up with something, use those kinds of principles that spin off something and do it yourself. Um, otherwise, you'll get lost amid the noise. If everyone starts to do the same thing, then nothing will work. So it's, I think it's quite useful to, to come up with your own ideas. Um, don't copy your blurb. Um, so don't, if you even if you've got a really great blurb, I think you need, people are going to be seeing that when they go onto the product page. So you've got to get them something that hooks them so that they do eventually see that. So just copying it um, verbatim, not the best um, tactic for me, um, I don't think. Um, and then things, that, obvious things again, like use social proof. So if you've got um, a, a great quote from Lee Child, say, then I would definitely be using something like that. Um, if you've got lots and lots of great reviews, I'd probably be using something like that. But just um, check Amazon's guidelines at the same time because they are quite specific about what you can and can't say. Um, so you, you can't um, you can't make claims about your book that um, would suggest that it's 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 better than something else. So you couldn't say um, James Blatcher's new book is more exciting than Craig Thomas's Firefox. You'd have to come up with something that hinted at that, but you you can't be as explicit as that. Um, you, if you're if you're using superlative claims, so uh, you need to source them. So if say Lee Child did say that Mark Dawson's new book is great, then I'd have to say that that's from Lee Child. Of course, I would do. And you can't reference review scores, so you can't say I've got a hundred five star reviews on Amazon. They they don't like. I don't know why, but they they don't allow that. And then I'm um, just on on what you can and can't use. Your your image um, will also be subjected to um, restrictions that aren't present when you upload the book onto the product page. So you, you can't use threatening images, don't have guns pointing out at the reader. Um, sexually suggestive images can't be used because these are ads, they appear unbidden in people's um, search results, for example. So Amazon doesn't want to be um, upsetting people. And also, and let, I don't, don't think this has changed, you can't advertise erotica. So that, um, that secret book you've been writing on the side, James, you're gonna yeah. have to find another way to advertise that, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's not the last flight, it's the last, no. Um, uh, so it, I had, did have a bit of a laugh during the uh, putting together the course because obviously the, you go into a lot of instructional detail in these this, these very areas. And one, one of the uh, example adverts have, uh, Amazon used for, this is a sexually explicit image. So don't use this sort of thing. They've changed. I don't know if you've noticed, I've uploaded the new ones in there. And one of them has the strangest arrangement of feet at the, the end of a bed. And mm. I'm not even sure mm. if it's supposed to be like an in-joke because it's not a... Yeah, it's, anyway... It's uh, it's not it's not normal. I'll tell you that. Uh, so yeah, that's a little treat if you get uh, get into our course. Um, good. Okay. Look, we're cracking on on time, Mark. How much more have we got? Um, I was through some some quick some quick tips. I mean, just um, it's worth adding a print edition if you haven't got print yet through CreateSpace or KDP Books. It's definitely worth doing that. Since I started running these ads, my print sales have doubled. Um, so that they, that could only be because of this. So, um, I'm getting tons and tons of print um, that as well. One thing that I, I hadn't done until recently is actually have a print edition of my box set. So this is like an 800 page box set. So on, on a device, it's irrelevant how many pages it is. You can kind of, you can do create space up to that kind of level. So I'm, I've got this massive doorstop now, which is retails at about, I think 15 pounds in the UK, 25 bucks in the States, something on those lines. But I, I'm getting sales on that now as well, which I've never had, had before. So I think there's loads of traffic eyeballs coming onto that page through the ads. Um, some people will just, will see it and will prefer print. So it makes sense to have that up there. Well, there's no reason um, not to have print now. It's so easy to get it done. Exactly. 
Yeah. And and when you're testing, so when you're monitoring, the, the score that Amazon gives you is called the ACOS score, so the average cost of sale. And what that is, is just the amount that you've spent divided by the revenue, provided that you are um, under 70%. So it's not 100% because you're getting a royalty on the, on the cover price. You're not getting all of it. So it, you get 70% of the cover price. Provided that your ACOS score is below 70, you're making a profit on that ad. But it's likely because things like KU reads um, aren't included, read through rates aren't included. So if I buy, if I sell book one, I'm obviously going to, you know, I'm likely to sell more books because my, my data suggests that people read more than just one book once they've read the first one. Audio is not included either. The, the kind of true um, margin is probably up towards, as long as it's like 90%, maybe 100%, I'm still probably making um, a profit on those ads when all the other additional factors are added in. So there's that to think about as well. Um, plenty of things to think about. I mean, it is, it's, a, it's an interesting new area. Um, I, I've had a lot of fun um, experimenting with this, and I'm really excited to include. Um, obviously, there'll be tons more in, in the course itself. I, you know, there's only so much I can, I can mention in an hour on a podcast. Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to getting that out there for people because it is, I think, if you we, if we were to ask me right now what's the most exciting advertising platform for authors uh, as we as we push into 2017, it would be Amazon right now. Um, it's got loads of potential. Facebook is still amazing. Um, everyone should be advertising on Facebook, but I think this is something that you also need to add to your, your armory as, as an indie author. Great. Okay, that really good. Excellent stuff, uh, Mark. Thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, we've got a couple of things to mention before we sign off. You can hear my laptop is now at uh, in full reheat mode. I'm, like, I'm actually getting warm from it, so it's about to break on me. Uh, but let's get a couple of these things out. We have uh, an author advertising uh, webinar coming up. Um, I've got all my notes here. Yes, I think it would be quite nice, wouldn't it, if we um, actually put together our own SPF webinar where we can talk about um, what's working and what isn't working right now in um, author advertising. So I just realised we haven't actually got a landing page for this set up yet, but we were thinking of uh, the 4th of April um, as, as, I think that's a Tuesday, which is the day before um, the ads course closes for the fourth time. Um, we'll, we'll have the full details later. We'll probably do well, an email then, out, but if, if we you, can, um, we can do that. Let's go, let's say the URL, uh, if we put self publishing formula.com forward slash ads update, ADS update, we use that. Okay. It'll be on the screen. If you're watching on the, uh, the video version, self publishing formula.com forward slash ads update, ADS U P D A T E sign up for that. And we will go through in more detail, uh, where we are with advertising paid ads, uh, in the world of the independent writer. Okay, we talked about the vault earlier. Just mention that URL as well, selfpublishingformula.com forward slash vault to get your ebook of all the good stuff that's come out in these podcasts over the past year or so. And Mark, um, I was going to ask you, is it possible that you could put together some of your best examples of AMS ads that we could, we could give yeah, away? Yeah, I, I think what I'll, I'll do is I'll grab... Um a good selection of ads that other people are using and then I'll, I'll put some comments with them why I think they, they're working or not working, how they could be improved, that kind of stuff. We can, we can give that away as the giveaway for this, um, this particular episode of the show. Yeah, okay. So that will be one more URL for you. That will be selfpublishingformula.com forward slash download 56. Download 56. You'll get a selection of ads that are working in AMS so you can get a good idea of which uh, direction you should be going in with that. We're almost there. We're on the cusp of our launch, our fourth launch for Advertising for Authors. We're getting lots of lovely messages in our Facebook groups, people excited about the launch coming up. I'm excited to reveal this course. It looks, it's our most beautiful looking course yet, and it's um, it's a high standard that we, uh, we, we set ourselves and we work to, so we're proud of that. Uh, it's going to go live on the 22nd of March, and that is going to be at 10 p.m., uk time which is 5 p.m if you're in new york and what time is that if you're in los angeles mark i haven't got the the foggiest idea 2 2 p.m there we go i think it's do you know 2 what it, do you know what it's 2 p.m in the afternoon but i haven't checked when that dreaded period is where america changes mm. its time a week before we do it's around oh, the do you know what it's around the <laughs> blooming 22nd of march i think we may even have chosen the weekend of the clocks going back excellent we Excellent. always do that. And Mark is um, Mark is brilliant <laughs> at lots of things, but not at telling the time. Can your no, children tell the time? Tell the time? Have you taught them to tell the time? 
Well, they don't need to know the time in Los Angeles. Um, so no. <laughs> I haven't, we haven't got that that far yet. I'm still slightly well, ahead of them, but it won't be long. They're millennials. They, they need to know the time in LA as much as anything else. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much, so much indeed, Mark. That was excellent. Uh, we're going to get busy getting everything ready uh, for the launch. Uh, we're recording this just before we go to London Book Fair. It's going out on the Friday of London Book Fair. Um, so if you came to LBF, how brilliant was it to see you? But we'll say a proper thank you uh, in the next couple of weeks. And we've got some good stuff to come in the future. So. We will uh, put all those URLs up again on the video screen and uh, in the comments if you're watching this live on Facebook and otherwise, we will see you next week. You've been listening to the Self-Publishing Formula podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingformula.com for more information, show notes and links on today's topics. You can also sign up for our free video series on using Facebook ads to grow your mailing list. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.